Yeah, so uh, I can uh, shed some light on the ERC-2222 standard that we're using. So we're using this standard uh, across the protocol, and we have uh, named it internally as the funds distribution token standard, uh, just because it's easier to say FDT than ERC-2222. Uh, so if you hear me say FDT, that's that's what I'm referring to. Um, and essentially what this does is it, it uh, provides a way to distribute um, earned funds, earned interest, for example, uh, equitably amongst uh, different people over time. So uh, it accounts for changing uh, equity, fluctuating equity in a given uh, contract over time. So really like just a easy example, this is the MPL token. So the MPL token, how we're using the FTT functionality in the MPL token is whenever establishment fees are earned by the Maple Treasury, we'll be transferring that USDC into the MPL token contract itself. So the MPL token contract will start accruing uh, these establishment fees that are earned by the treasury. And uh, over time, um, MPL token holders will be able to claim um, proportionate portions of that USDC that gets pooled in that pool based on their balance. So if I have 100 MPL tokens, uh, or let's say I have 1% of MPL tokens, I'm an MPL whale, um, <laughs> and there's a USDC amount that goes in to the MPL contract, I'd be able to claim 1% of the USDC that comes in. But let's say the next day, uh, you know, I sell half of my MPL tokens on the open market. Going forward, I would only be able to claim 0.5% of the USDC uh, that's, that's in that contract. So it's a, it's a really nice and useful way to distribute funds um, uh, equitably amongst, uh, amongst contracts and amongst people. Like we're, we're using this functionality pretty much across the board in the actual protocol smart contracts uh, for like liquidity providers to claim interest generated by the pool for pools to claim interest generated by loans, for stakers to claim interest generated by pools. Uh, we're using it in a lot of different places. It's, it's very useful. So this brings us to the point about the Uniswap and balancer pools, right? So the balancer, the initial balancer pool uh, that we have is an MPL USDC 50-50 balancer pool. And so um, when you know, right now, the balancer pool itself has a large balance of MPL tokens, right? So based on the functionality that I explained around FDTs, the balancer pool smart contract actually has a claim on USDC that's transferred into the MPL contract. So what we did, we, we accounted for this ahead of time because we realized like, oh wait, there's actually gonna be smart contracts that are custodying, custodying MPL tokens. So we made a function called withdraw funds on behalf of, and all that that does is it claims interest on behalf of another address and transfers that interest to that address. So in the case of the balancer pool, uh, they have a large balance of MPL tokens. They're accruing interest that's getting generated or sent from our treasury into the MPL token contract. And we are claiming it on behalf of the balancer pool. So that USDC gets sent into the balancer pool smart contract. But what's really cool about this is because since it's an MPL USDC balancer pool pair and balancer is an AMM, by increasing the balance of USDC in that AMM, it's actually um, creating an implied buy pressure on the MPL token. So it's actually propping up the price of MPL because the USDC, it essentially is like buying MPL. Um, so it's providing this sort of propped up uh, buy pressure for, for the, the pair. And so in the case of Uniswap, same idea, 
exact same idea. Uh, the Uniswap pool would be holding a large uh, portion of MPL tokens so that when uh, we transfer USDC into the Uniswap pool, the USDC balance will raise, which, which props up the price of MPL. The reason that we cannot support a MPL ETH pair in Uniswap is because if we claimed USDC on behalf of an MPL ETH Uniswap pair, the USDC would get sent into the Uniswap pool, but it would effectively be useless there because there's no uh, there's no use for it if it's not a USDC pair because it's not going to contribute to the uh, the functionality of that pool. It'll just sit there, and it can't be claimed by anybody. So that's yeah, that's that's the reason that it's it's necessary to have uh, a USDC pair. Going forward, uh, because you know, impermanent loss is a is a consideration, obviously, right, for the liquidity providers. So going forward, we have a long term plan to have a multi asset balancer pool that will support MPL, uh, WEF, WBTC, DAI, USDC, whatever. We can add a bunch of assets to one pool to mitigate a permanent loss, but still be able to have that functionality where. USDC gets added to the pool and uh, increases the implied valuation of that deal. That was amazing. Thank you.